Father God, thank you for the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job. Amen. Um, that was uh, Sister Tatiana, and this is the first time she's appeared for a service, so those of you who see this video and you're scared to come to this church, beware, because we will get you. Um, this, um, this church is really, it's coming along, and I know it's only us, but trust me, um, when you first came, there was nobody. And uh, that's good. It's good, because, because what it's all about is is, is sometimes you gotta cut those people that have been with you for a long time away. And um, it's a hard thing to do. Um, but the word of God is like that. Jesus said that don't think that I came to bring peace, which is the word shalom, which is the means prosperity and goodness upon you. But he says he came to bring a sword and, and separate mother from father, children from parents, you know, brothers from sisters. Um, because his, 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 he's focused on you. And he wants you to focus on him. And, and sometimes you, you just have to walk away um, so that you can move ahead. Because love can be a hurting thing. Love can bind you. Love can shackle you. And we can't let relationships, you know, whatever they are, stand between you and the Lord and your destiny because that becomes an idol. The only relationship that God really you know, honors truly is between husband and wife, and and you know, I'm gonna we're gonna constantly pray that that the Lord guide us all to, to that one He may have for us. Hey, you know, it's 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 really rough, but He will, He will, as we find ourselves in Him. So I just thank Tatiana for getting up, Tatiana for getting up and doing it um, so quickly. I'm gonna pray, and then we're gonna have um, Brother Brandon come and pray. Um, we're going to sing um, one little brief song, and then we're going to go ahead into our service. We, this is Bible study, and um, we're, we're featuring Brother Brandon. He wrote a, a very powerful piece about discipleship, and I think it's something that has to be shared. And it's something that God put on his heart. It seemed like this man was a minister in the making. We're going to find out. and He's a minister in the making, and we're going we're gonna to work with him and, and, uh, just, and just love him. And uh, let him know he's in a safe place in which he'll be empowered. Amen. Amen. So um, I will pray. Um, Brother Brandon will, will pray and then we'll begin our service. Father, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. We give you praise and the honor and the glory. God, I thank you for each person that's here now, oh Father, Lord. Lord, you know what's in their hearts. You know what is their desires, Lord. You know their, their comings in and their going out, Lord. You know how much they need you, oh Father God, how much they want you, oh God. You know how much they've been through and how much is even waiting for them, oh Lord, once they leave this place, oh Father God. But Lord, I ask you to put a hedge around them, Lord. I ask you, oh Father God, to, to heal every hurt, Lord. You're, you're a God that is not limited unto time, but that can go on back into time and heal things, Lord. You even cause for Hezekiah, the, the clock to go backwards, the sun to move backwards, Lord, so that you're not limited according to time. So whatever it is we bring here today that needs to be done, you can do it and I ask you to do it right now. Lord, I, I want you to bless us all with prosperity, Lord. Not only financial, Lord, but, but prosperity in our emotions and prosperity in our dreams, Lord, that we can dream large dreams and big dreams in you, Jesus, that we're no longer afraid or hiding our light under a bushel, but we are like a city on a hill. And let us realize that and we cannot be hidden. Lord, just bless us, Lord. Bless our families, bless our friends, even bless our enemies, bless our neighbors, bless the future connections that we shall make, Lord, and help us to be our best selves as we move ahead, Lord. Bless every person in this community, oh Father God. Bless those who are lighting up right now. Bless those who are drinking right now. Bless those who are in sadness right now. Those who are hurting and those who will be hurt right now, oh Father God. Bless children, oh God. Lord, get, make us to be great examples for them, oh Father God. Let us nurture them and bring them up in a world of, of, of happiness and security, Lord. And let our families be, be renewed, oh Father God. Let Father, the curse of fatherlessness be stopped right now within us, one by one, oh Father God, as we spread your word, that, that these things that bind us shall be broken. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we adore you. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Father God, I come to you as humbly as I know how, asking that you bless this service, that your will be done, and that you are number one in all that is done. Um, I pray that you use me despite my weaknesses, but through my weaknesses, your strength be known. I pray, Lord, that each of us, each of our minds are changed to align with you. And that we will get to the point where sin and wickedness are horrible things to us. They're disgusting things to us, but holiness will draw to um, your will, everything that is good and of good nature that we will hunger for. I pray that each and every person here gains a zeal for your word. I pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Um, we're not going to proceed with Brother Brandon. He has a word for us. And um, we, we're going to pray his strength. Because like I said, this is, a, this is a big, 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 big day. Um, and as he came in, I gave him a little grief and I teased him a little bit out of love, of course. And um, it's a big day for him and I'm proud of him. I've known his brother a couple of days now, but he's, he's becoming like a son. And I'm proud of him. And I want you just come forward, give it all you got, and do not be afraid. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come forward. Brandon Williams, and um, I would like to share with you a message that was written, um, and I'm going to be reading a little bit off the paper, it's not memorized, but um, let's begin. Um, biblically, we see in the scriptures that the number 12 represents perfection in government, as in the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, the 12 spies who were all leaders of each tribe sent out to scout the promised land into the new, and into the New Testament, the 12 disciples um, called to begin what we know now as the church. Um, so it was important when one of the disciples who were exposed to be a devil, um, namely Judas Iscariot, he was replaced as a disciple and an apostle. So the story basically goes, Jesus went around to Galilee and he started picking up disciples. And um, there was Peter, um, there was different um, Andrew, Simon, he, he, he picked people to follow him and to help bring in, usher in this new kingdom. And Judas Iscariot was one of them. And um, he betrayed Jesus. He betrayed them for greed. Um, he betrayed them for worldly possessions. He never quite got it. He was with Jesus, but he was never really with Jesus. Um, and we find that today a lot. Um, we find people who proclaim Jesus, who uh, speak about Jesus, but they're not really with him. And, you know, I tend to believe that each of the disciples was a type of believer. Um, there's Peter, the first person who jumps out, who has to be number one and has to, you know, has to be heard amongst all people. There's, you know, John who is emotional, you know, who's kind of reserved and so forth. And there's all of these, there's the doubting type, there's all of these different types of disciples, but amongst them was a devil. Mm -hmm. um, and when 
everything came to terms, um, he was he showed his true colors, and he was told that you know, and 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 we're told in the scriptures that um, he sold Jesus out to to die, understanding everything that was to come to place. Um, gold was more worthy to him than fellowship with the one true God. Because of that, he was told, we were told in the scriptures that Jesus gave the disciples the instructions on how to replace this man. All right, so we're going to move forward. And what you have to understand that Jesus was in the peak of his ministries. The 12 disciples were under him in leadership. They were given much honor, respect, and power. And at the time, they were kind of a big deal. Now, I don't mean that they were known worldwide, but they knew they were on to something. They knew that what they are, are a part of was something big. And it was so big that they even we even find them arguing amongst themselves who would be the greatest among the greats. Um, let's look to the word. Um, can we turn to Luke 10, verses 1 through 20? And we're going to go through it briefly. Okay, when you when you there, say it. Now I'm going to very quickly read through it and on your own time you can take your time and read it carefully. But it says, after these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two out, two by two, his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, sandal. Um, I'm going to move forward to nine. And heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near unto you. But wherever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. I'm going to stop there. Who are these 70 disciples? We know of Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John the Revelator, and they are known today as Jesus' inner circle. But also there was Philip, Bartholomew, Dalton Thomas, Didymus, Matthew, Levi, the tax collector, and the younger James, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. That's 12. So who are, who are the other 58? Well, the scriptures, we only get the name of two other 58 spoken in Luke. Now let's look at Acts 1 and 21. In Acts 1 and 21, it says, Therefore, of these men who have accompanied with us, all of the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So basically what, what I'm pointing out in these scriptures is that um, we know the 12. We usually think of the disciples as 12 people, but there was much more. There were many other followers of Jesus that were called disciples, but these were the disciples that was to, to be great. They were like the starting lineup of a basketball team. You know, these were the people that, you know, were going to bring home the championship or, you know, in parallel, they were the people that were going to build the church. And this other 70 was like the, the, the reserve team, you know. Um, and 
out of the other 58 right here, we see that there were qualifications that they had to, in order to be a part of this team, they had to um, see certain things. They, they had to be there up until the time that John baptized Jesus, and they had to um, see him taken away. Now them, out of those people, they had the qualifications to become one of the 12. Now, at this moment, there are 11 disciples. So one of the other 58s will be promoted. And it was between Matthias and Joseph Justice Barsabbas. Now these men didn't just show up for the job. Um, in chapter one of the book of Acts, we find two equally qualified men of God who had a chance to become one of the leaders of God's perfect government, the church. They will become the living church. They will become living church history. To the other, his reward is obscurity. I want to ask you, whoever's listening, have you ever found yourself in a position where you've done the work? you sacrificed the time, you've been patient, you've given, you're all without reward, the same reward that others were receiving. Then all in one moment, you're being considered for a position of the lifetime. It could be a career, a relationship, a deal you've toiled over, or even playing a sport from the bench and you were given an opportunity to show what you have. In all of these situations, you thought, I deserve this. And if I just had the opportunity, I would grab the moment and make the most of it. Have you ever been in that situation? Yes. Man. Listen, the bigger the opportunity, the stronger you'll feel about it. Amen. That's where Justin Barsabbas was. I mean, Jesus died and resurrected. If there was any doubt who he was, this was the end all be all. Yes. They were sacrificing, they gave up their family, their life, all on the hopes that this man, if he was a man, that this man was the Messiah, but they didn't have proof, they had faith. Yes. But now, it's confirmed. Now, it went from, I'm investing in something and I hope that there's something to come out of it to, I'm investing in something and now I know something's going to come out of it. Yes. And you're, and you're already sitting in the background. You're already watching the other disciples heal people and do miraculous things. But you're in the background. And all of a sudden you find out that you can be one of the 12. Yes. You can be a part of the starting lineup. Yes. And at this time, the church within a couple of decades was about to turn the whole world upside down. And to add to the excitement, power was coming in the form of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The disciples made their decision. They chose Matthias. Justin was rejected. Today I propose to you a question. What do you do when you do not get that promotion, that relationship or that deal? What do you do when you don't get that opportunity, when you have to sit back and watch Someone else make the most of the opportunity that you wanted. On principle, the answer is easy. Yes. You press on. You keep going. You keep moving forward. But it's not so easily said when you're crushed under the weight of disappointment. The truth is, you probably don't know where the story ends. Yes. See, historically, Justin never gives up. He is never discouraged. Now, there are many famed people in the New Testament today, and Justin isn't any less obscure than Thaddeus or the younger James. What happened to Thomas after believing? I don't know, but I can tell you that Justin became a prominent bishop in Eurothropolis. I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but he became a prominent bishop there. A Roman city in Jerusalem and Eurothropolis means house of the powerful. Okay. Yes. And where he died, an, and he died an honorable death as a martyr. So, in conclusion, what I'll say is, 
is that if you're a Peter or you're a John, that's awesome. If you're a rock star, if you're a person that walks into the room and everybody stops and looks at you and you can command a crowd and you can, you're, you know, your appearance is always sharp and your mind is always sharp and you always know the right thing to do and you always do the right thing and you're close to perfection. If you're one of these people or even if you're flawed but you've been called to be in the front and you've been called to do great things and so forth, you know what, that's awesome. Yes. And I applaud you. But I want to talk to the Justins and the Thomases and the other 58 disciples who are on the bench. Yes. I want to talk to you of the body who are not chosen to run a mega church or have tens of thousands of followers. You people who are going crazy, you know, is the eye more important than the ear? If you lose the hearing, would you not miss its function? If you're called to be amongst the 12, fine, but today I say to the other 58, rise and be great. Yes. You may not be one of the 12s, but you can be of the house of the powerful. Yes. You can, you can be of the house of the powerful. I say this today, and that's the conclusion. Thank you. Amen. Um, wow, I gotta say wow, um, brother, brother Brandon, because this is his first time, and um, you delivered well, you delivered well, and very well, no one will know that you've never been in the pulpit before, and, and, and you will see, after everything's edited, you will see um, that you did very well, and you gotta do this more, and I think you should be doing this every week. And uh, consider yourself now in seminary because you're going to have to deliver because it'll be a, a shame and a sin that you have that ability and, and, and you're not using it. Um, I just I just got to just 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 to say I thank you for having the courage to come forth. And I, I know it's not easy, but you did it, and you and you did awesomely well. God is using you because what you were saying blessed me mightily because we all get that way. We forget. Everyone else that God is with us too. And we look at everyone else and we think that it's not happening. God doesn't love me. I'm no good. I'm a failure because it's not happening at, at, at the particular rate in which you think it should. Um, but you're right on point, my brother. I think that that's going to be an essential part of your message, you know, where you're coming from. And, and just push hard. Work on it. Work on it. Search that Bible. And, and, and the, you, you will watch in a short period of time what God's going to do for your life. Things are about to change rapidly. And, and they may even change in, in a way that spin your head. You might not even like it. But it's, it's to prune you like, like, like a rose bush so you can blossom. But you on the right track. And when you stop, and I'm just excited that, that I feel like a midwife. And I'm excited to, to see how, how, how you, you are coming um, into your own. And I, I look forward to seeing you and being with you when the time comes to open up your own church. Um, and just let that rest with you because there's no reason why you can't if you hold to Jesus' hand. You got the gift and you got to use it. Amen? Amen. 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 May I know your name, sister? Regina. Hi, Regina. Hello. Hi. How'd you come to find us today? My brother. That's your brother? All righty now. Go ahead. Amen. Did you know he could preach? Wow. <laughs> Folks who's watching this video, he looks at that like, yeah, you're, you're for real. Sometimes people see it in us, but we can't see it in ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to look at quickly, because Brandon brought it beautifully. Um, I'm going to be getting a, um, a series on Cain. And what I'm really after with looking at Cain is, I'm asking a question, why are we here? Why are we alive? And that's essential. Because many of us, and I've asked these questions, and as you go out tomorrow, and if you want to bother people, like I love to do, ask them. Answer me this question, see if you can. And whatever answer they give is fine. So don't beat them up. But ask them why you are here. Why are you here? What is your purpose in life? What are you supposed to be doing here? And just, just note the answers. 
And as the series develops, um, it's going to be something I'm going to try to answer. Um, but it's one of those faith things too. And I, and I decided to take the, the issue of, of Cain. We're going to look at that quickly. We're going to move on and um, we're going to close. Amen? Amen? Genesis 1. I'm sorry, Genesis 4. And it reads, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it bless us and keep us, and it refreshes us, Lord. We ask that we remember this verse, and that we review it and rehearse it in our minds, because it is powerful. It, it, it does so much for us, Lord. All your word does for us, but as we does so much for us, but as we go through this, this series, um, let us look at ourselves and not at other people and to see how we can become better. Yes. Amen and amen. We all know the story of Adam and Eve because and God makes, makes, makes Adam, he forms him from the dust of the ground and the Bible tells us so that we never forget that we are from the dust of the ground. Sometimes we think we're all that, like nothing about us has a bad odor, but the Bible says we are from the dust of the ground. If we understand this, that we are from the dust of the ground, that everything comes from God, we got our heads in the right place. And the Bible says how they fall from grace. He, he creates Eve, and he creates Eve from, from, from Adam's side. And I always hear women say, I'm from your side. That means I'm not behind you. I'm right next to you, you, you know, and which is fine. But women in, in the Bible represent the church. Because the church is the bride of Christ. That's that's just how blessed they are. And and as 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 Eve came out of the side of Adam, so did the church come out of the side of Christ when he was wounded. And and, and often when we see these types of things that happen in the Bible, that they, they, they have a heavenly meaning. They, they they foreshadow what is to come next. And you know, they sin, they eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. And, and God deals with them. And, but he tells Eve, again, he tells her that, that the, the, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. I, I stress this thing about women is because I, I like to balance the scales because we have a Christian tradition that, that came out of you know, a, a certain church philosophy tend to put women down and say they can't preach. They shouldn't be in the pulpit. But the Bible clearly states that the first person who said, the Lord said was Eve when she said the Lord said we shall not eat even if she was saying it to the serpent because Adam was silent and Adam was there with her when she ate and she gave to her husband with her that's what the Bible says but she tried a defense fail or not so God blessed her even though her seed it wasn't Joseph's seed a man's seed it was the seed of the Holy Spirit and, 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 and when they fell from grace they, they came together and they had a child and, 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 and she says, as we read, I now have a man from the Lord. Sometimes when, when we hear the word, you know, we think about what we need. Um, you know, we may want a mate and then somebody comes along and we say, aha, uh -huh, I got a, a man from the Lord. You smiling, sister. Uh, or sometimes we say we got a woman from the Lord. Or, you know, we look at someone and, and you know, someone might prophesy to us and the first thing come along, aha, you hit, let's go. And this is what Eve did. Because we know how the story went. Cain became a killer. Mm. You know, how many times have we thought we found the, the, the thing of our heart, the thing of our dreams, and, and, and it's a killer. And it kills something that we find dear. And we know further that, again, she gets able, and she's also blessed by Abel. And these two people, Cain and Abel, are the parents of Adam and Eve, how more perfect can you get? Because the first thing Adam saw when God breathed into him 
was the glory of God. The first thing Adam saw was God's glory as God breathed his, his breath into him. I have not seen that. Adam saw that. Adam walked with the Lord. And Adam had the ability to name every animal. And Adam was just, he was, he, he was formed by hand by the Lord. So he was extra special. And these were their parents. And Eve was, 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 was shaped with, with, with Adam's rib. So she, they, were, they were of this royal great lineage. And, and they had children and they turned out to be a disaster. So it doesn't matter who your parents were. It doesn't matter if they were superior or inferior. It's what God says. And, and, and it's how you live your life that determines your altitude. Don't think just because you might have been found in a garbage can. And I've had friends who were found in garbage cans. Brother of mine, good, good, good buddy that I met in rehab. And he said his mother threw him in a garbage can, in a dumpster. And there he was found. But that had nothing to do with where this man would, would go. Where, where would he be? The greatness he'd have in his life because as a person in rehabilitation, he touched many lives. He's, he's one of the great persons there. And then Cain and Abel grew up. And then the Bible says it came to pass that they began to, to, to sacrifice to the Lord. And, and, and that means that they had built an altar so that they were taught how to pray, how to worship. But then Cain, the star of our, of our series, he gives a grain offering to the Lord. And, 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 and Abel gives, gives an offering of, of his flock. The Bible says, furthermore, that there's not that distinction between, between offerings because it says that Abel, moreover, gave the firstlings. So in addition to a grain offering, he gives also his firstlings. And this, this is important because a grain offering is, is what's called um, a heave offering or a wave offering. Like when you wave to the Lord, we acknowledge him here. That's all that Cain will do. And sometimes that's all that we can do. And, 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 and he felt that Abel was a show off because Abel, he waved during his worship with the Lord. He did, he went through the, the motions of it. That's what his sacrifice was to God. And most of us are like that. I am like that. And when it comes to negativity, I come first. I'm the chief sinner. I am like that. And I have to keep reminding myself every day to give it up and turn it loose and give more of myself. But what Abel would do is that he would, he would sacrifice his first things. And this was very hard because, because he, had to, he, he had to get the animal, kill the animal. He had to cut the animal. He had to take everything but the skin of the animal and put it on the altar. And trying to burn wet, bloody flesh is not an easy job. You can, some, one time I left meat in the barbecue and left and it came back next morning, it was just a hard crisp, but it was still there. So it, it takes work to consume a physical animal, a physical body. So it was work. So Abel was putting in time in his worship. He, 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 whatever God gave him, he took the, the time to understand how it was made, how it was built. He deconstructed it. He, he understood he, he, the, the, the butchery of the animal. He, he, he dealt with all the mess of it. He was, he, was, he was not afraid to get his hands dirty and bloody and smelly and, and, and hear the cry of a thing in which he, he raised from birth and he put it to death and he burned it and he stood there while it burned. And that was the difference. And, and, and that is the distinction there because when you are sacrificing like that, you are, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a type, it's a foreshadowing of flesh is not important. My flesh is not important. And as I go through this process and I understand what flesh is and flesh is to be devoted to the Lord, I'm saying, Lord, I accept your plan for my life. And if my flesh has to be burnt, let it be. But the only thing Cain wanted to do was wave. Hi, Jesus. And that was it. That means that Cain was also a tither. Because he was giving. He was sacrificing. He was a tither. So many of us tithe. You know, tithers are good. But many of us tithe, but we tithe with our money, we don't tithe with our heart. We don't tithe with our time. We don't tithe with our kindness. We don't tithe in prayer and attention to the Lord. We will give him the stupid 10% that we that our hand be shaking. I know y'all be have that problem too. And it's not only me, my hand be shaking. Oh Lord, 10%. You know, it's going up here. Okay, sister, we're gonna talk later. And, and, and it's hard, it's hard, especially when, when you only got $10, you give the Lord a dollar. 
But, but try having a thousand dollar check and build. It ain't easy. And that's all Cain would do. And, and, and that's to tell us that, that religiosity, going through the motions, is not going to make you. But with, with Abel, Abel understood why he was here. And when you understand why you're here, what your life means, you go all out. You pull out every stop to get it done. And this is how you separate those who, who, who are goats from the sheep. Because, because those who want to be successful in anything, I don't care what endeavor it is, if you haven't reached a point where you're going to throw it all on the line, you are not going to get anywhere. You will be a worker, a, one of the pack in the back. And, and, and murmuring, but if you want something from God, if you want to get close to God and close to His power, it takes so much effort, and most of us don't want to do it because we want God to just bless us, just, just bless me, Jesus, just, just do what has to be done. I'm reminding of, 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 of the general, and I forget his name, but his name will come back to me. He went to Elisha, and he had, he had leprosy, and Elisha said, go dip in the river, and he said, Hold it, you are a mighty prophet of God. Why can't you just bring down lightning and make me whole? And, and the river, the Jordan River, was at the end of the river. And, and the upper land in Syria and Babylon, they use it as a, as a cesspool. So whatever waste they had went into the Jordan River. And Israel was at the end of it. So you could be in a bad neighborhood, be the cesspool, but yet still be the blessed children of God. And he was in the land of the blessed, but he didn't want to go through that water until they said, listen, go through it. And then when he went through it, he came up clean. And that somehow we don't want to do these things for the Lord. And you might be praying at noon. You might be getting up and praying. We might be in a, in a rush. It could be so many other things. But when we understand why we are here, when you really want to win in this life, you're going to go the extra mile. And, and the, the thing about going the extra mile, things began to fall off of you. you. We think that we have to pray for this, for that, and the other. No, be, be, because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. When God saw that, that, that it was not good for a man to be alone, what he told Adam to do is go name every animal first. Man, it took the man 500 years. But he had to do the work. And after he did the work, he got the desire of his heart. 